Bolivia, they're known as the Cholita wrestlers. Whether they're Quechua or Aymara, these women fight a daily battle to defend the rights of their indigenous communities. As trailblazers, they've been working to overcome prejudice in their country for decades. Just outside of the Bolivian capital La Paz, this Sunday show of female wrestlers has been pulling in tourists and wrestling aficionados alike for the past 30 years. All of them keen to experience this Bolivian style of wrestling. Incredible because it just shows how powerful women are and that they're ready for all kinds of competition. Look at her, oh my god, look at that. See, that is a fierce, powerful woman. She's not giving up, she's going on fighting and fighting. A lot of women can believe in their dreams thanks to our show. Every woman actually has a bit of a wrestler in her. Before, they were at the bottom of the social ladder, but now they are on their way up and continuing to climb. This liberation movement has its roots in La Paz. In this mountainous area, home to around 10 million people, the Chulitas can be found everywhere. From the Spanish colonial era onwards, they were seen as members of a servant class, but their distinctive appearance has allowed them to stand out over the past five centuries. After constitutional advances made by President Evo Morales in 2009, these Cholitas can enjoy their full rights as citizens. They were given access to education and healthcare and even now have a political presence. Lord Chambila is the first woman in history to chair the Municipal Council of Apaz. This former shopkeeper has now been in the post for a few months. Of course, I'm an emblematic figure, an example for all Cholita women. I'll be there for them to defend their interests. They know that. Her success is a source of pride for a community which has long endured prejudice and discrimination. They're really clever. They're true professionals. They're so capable, aren't they? Now, there are Chilita women at all political levels, on local and regional councils, and even in government. This media company is helping to share indigenous culture throughout the country. They produce shows entirely in the Aymara language. Radio San Gabriel's editorial team is mostly female, with a staff of around 30 journalists and backing from a Catholic institution. For nearly 70 years, they've aimed to keep their audience of around one and a half million Aymara people informed. We carry the voice of all of our sisters. When an Aymara listener tunes into our programs, she can identify with them because we belong to the same community. She says to herself, if I couldn't do it in my time, my daughters and my nieces will be able to. It galvanizes them. These advances are giving a whole new generation extra motivation to defend their identity. Don't forget that the braid always starts from here. These students are enrolled in a modeling course. Fifteen sessions are spread out over a year where all the cholita techniques are taught to them, right down to the smallest detail. We do our hair this way because the cholita has long hair. It's our little trick. You see, our braid doesn't start from the forehead, but from the nape of the neck. More than just instructions to follow, the course represents a personal commitment for all these Cholita descendants. All proud to defend their culture through artistic activity. Taking this course allows us to be more visible and for people to see more women in traditional clothes. More and more women want to wear them. Honestly, it's very important. Looking back, I can say this course has given me a lot and continue to do so. I've gained in confidence and I feel more like a woman. For me, it's an essential activity for expanding our community.
Whether Aymara or Quechua, these Cholitas of a new era are preparing themselves to conquer Bolivian society.